The 2015 Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language. Who is watching? Hello and welcome to the Enjoy Summit. Today we're going to talk about Sami languages and about the Northern Sami in particular. And um, uh, we're going uh, to try to find out why Sami is so unique and what makes it different from other languages. And uh, we'll compare Sami and Finnish and see how similar they are or not. Um, and we'll see how the Sami is adapting to new challenges, that is, uh, including new modern words in its vocabulary and coexisting with Norwegian. And we're also going to have some fun with Sami. Uh, it's a bit more challenging. <laughs> I'm sure we'll manage. Uh, we will um, uh, learn how to flirt in Northern Sami. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're also going to learn a uh, tongue twister. And in the end, I'm going to tell you um, where you can learn this beautiful language, where you can learn what it's uh, So in total, it will take me about five hours. So maybe something. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, that was a joke. Yeah, uh, it's going to take about 40 minutes. And, um, That's two. <laughs> yeah. Plus two, yeah. Uh, and it's also important uh, for me to mention that uh, the Sami traditions and culture is very rich. So unfortunately, in this uh, lecture, I'm not going to have time to cover it, so we're going to talk about the Sami tradition only. But if you have any questions later, uh, you're all going to come up to me. Perfect. Um, yeah. Now you see the map. And um, uh, some of these languages are, uh, well, actually, all of them are endangered, but some are. Uh, unfortunately, severely endangered, like in Sami, which is spoken about 20 people, and uh, uh, in Iceland, which is spoken about 200 people. That is in general. So, if you plan to learn some of the languages, you uh, hurry up. And the Northern Sami, the language that we're going to focus on today, uh, is spoken about 25,000 people, and it's the most widespread of all Sami languages, and spoken in Sweden, Norway, and there's this number. Uh, Okay, uh, I think that there is nothing better than an example uh, made by a native speaker. So now we're going to watch a short video of a Sami native speaker. Uh, oops, not yet. Tell you story. Uh, how do you want to place the video? Uh, Um, but we can divide them into two groups. 
Western Hemisphere, I think uh, Western uh, Northern Sunday, uh, which is also the written standard. And um, um, it's actually minority dialect, uh, but it's uh, usually sold to foreigners and people that want to learn something because it's easier to understand. And um, they're definitely, those two dialects are definitely mutually intelligible, uh, but different things mean. Yeah, different words mean different things in uh, those dialects. So, for example, in Karachovka dialect, uh, the eastern one, uh, they say Muntanieliki, uh, which means I'm hungry. But in Bodkin dialect, the one that I speak, it means that I'm dying of hunger, like I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, uh, create some funny misunderstandings. Um, and um, funny grammar, uh, I would say that uh, the grammar of uh, Finnish unique language is. Generally, like notorious for being uh, very difficult, and Sami grammar is definitely difficult, but not impossible to learn. So unlike Finnish, it has it has only seven cases, and uh, here you can see uh, some of the features, um, some of the interesting features of the grammar. Uh, it also uses negative verbs, just like Finnish, um, and it also uh, uses. Um, oh, um, actually, not also Finnish doesn't have dual personal pronouns, uh, but it can be compared to Arabic. But in Arabic, uh, they're usually uh, avoided. In Sami, they're part of everyday language, so you've got to use them. So it's like us two, uh, you two, and they, and them. And um, it has prepositions in both positions. Prepositions are not as common. So if you want to say, I speak about the weather, you say, I speak weather about. And uh, what makes it easy is that there are no genders, uh, no articles, and he and she is the same word. <laughs> Very friendly. <laughs> 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 um, yes and no in Salome. Um, <coughs> what, what's the big deal about it? Uh, well, actually, there is uh, no single word. No single word that means yes and, or no in Northern Salome. There are several ways of saying it. And um, you can say yo, uh, or uh, if people ask you, for example, if uh, do you understand? You can say de ifmedam using the article uh, de and uh, repeating the verb. And with no, you can just say the, you can use the negative verb, or you can say ah uh ah, -uh, which sounds a bit uh, childish. And um, well, yeah, both the verb and the verb. The um, month. Uh, first of all, it's important to mention that the sunny um, year is not divided into four seasons, like uh, our year, but into eight. So uh, what is different is that we have seasons like um, spring, winter, winter, uh, autumn, autumn. Uh, and so on and so on. And um, uh, as you see, the, uh, the names of the month are completely different from what we were used to see in most European and non European languages. And um, um, some of these are uh, borrowed from the region, and some of these are um, uh, indigenous sign words. So they are important, uh, they have been used for uh, years, and they are important to understand the sign words in the sign culture. For instance, Nyoktamano means uh, small month, uh, March is when the swans are coming to Sapmi, to the Sami land. And uh, Miesimano is May, uh, is when uh, small uh, rain, baby reindeer cubs are born. Very cute. And uh, uh, Stapmamano is the month of darkness, November. So it's when the sun goes down, it doesn't come back before March. Uh, and but the long words from the region are like Oda Yagimano, the New Year month, uh, January, and Yoda Mano, uh, Christmas month, December. Uh, snow, reindeer, and salmon, three of the most important things in Sami culture, and because uh, most of the Samis see that every day. And uh, unlike uh, most of the languages, uh, they have uh, not only single words to define it, but lots of words. And uh, so I know that. Uh, Inuit languages are known for having like hundred words, hundred different words for snow. Uh, well, I personally counted uh, six, at least six different words to describe snow in Northern Sami. In general uh, name for it is Mohta, which means just normal snow. And then we, we can say like hard snow, um, soft snow, melting snow, snow that has been stepped by uh, an animal. <laughs> and so on and so on. <laughs> and also reindeer, very important animal in the Sami culture, um, even for the Samis that are not reindeer herders. And uh, the uh, general word for this is reindeer, 
and then there can be a female reindeer, reindeer without horns, uh, reindeer for sale, uh, transportation reindeer, so any kind of reindeer. It's more than nine words, but I've come to nine. <laughs> no, I don't need that one. Uh, sum and finish. I've taken some uh, random words and translated them into Finnish. Uh, does anyone speak Finnish here? If I speak. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I, I don't speak Finnish, I speak only Sami, but uh, uh, as you can see, they are totally different. So the question that I've been asked very often, can you understand Finnish? No, I cannot. But, Mutta, uh, Mutto, you can see the last sentence, which means uh, I want to practice um, Finnish every day. And the first one is in Finnish, the second one is in Sami, and they are definitely Finnish like those. So I, I, I can understand it without the dictionary or spoken and uh, written. So sometimes there are a lot of coincidences when we can understand each other, but I would say it's about 10 20 percent. So uh, the final answer is no. We cannot understand each other. Um, mixing with Norwegian is something that appears very often uh, because of uh, more frequent contact with the majority of the population that is Norwegians. And, um, um, also, there are some words that never existed in, uh, in the Sami language, like all the old words that just came uh, with the popular culture. Um, so, what they do, <laughs> they're really creative, I must say. Uh, they take, uh, for example, a Norwegian word, um, let's say, let's take a word to practice or to exercise, which means uh, to train, uh, which means otrene in Norwegian. And Sami, they have their own word, it is harihavan. Uh, so instead of saying Moon Hari Halan, I exercise, they say Moon Tenen, which is totally wrong, but they do it all the time. So if, if in future you plan to learn Sami and some of you forget the word, and uh, Sami words are also quite long and difficult, to say it in Norwegian or Swedish, and they will not even notice. It's totally fine. Everyone does it. <laughs> but uh, I, I personally don't recommend it. I, I try not to use them. And uh, another thing that we do is copying. So they take a um, word. That, uh, with the meaning, with its meaning, uh, directly from the region into Sami, uh, but it's not quite the same. For example, to the word to find out um, in Sami is uh, in the region is finne uh, ut, not the same as in English. So they just said mun gavna always, so I find out, literally. This is from Sami. My, my personal favorite is uh, Davi Choga. Uh, Davi means uh, north, Choga means li light. So Northern Lights, that word doesn't exist in Sami, but uh, one of my friends said that uh, he was confused. <laughs> so there's an interesting conversation. And um, um, ultimately, we uh, stand in front of a challenge because um, if everyone mixes Sami language with their uh, majority languages, how are they able to understand their neighbors? Because the Sami people view themselves as one nation, Sami people uh, across the borders. So uh, if Swedish and Norwegian are definitely mutually intelligible, uh, that's not the case with Finnish. So if uh, the Finnish Sami mixes uh, his Sami with Finnish and Norwegian with Norwegian, they will not be able to understand each other. Uh, so there are certainly things to be done, done with that, and uh, the parliaments, the Sami parliaments, uh, are working with that. Um, uh, yeah, are working on that. And that's why the way Sami is back. New words. Um, it has come with a lot of new words in the uh, Sami language recently to describe uh, new things that they have not seen before, maybe. Yes, um, the person that uh, shows his own initiative, so a volunteer. Dito, um, if I told you that the word get means to, to know, and Dito is a thing that knows something, what could it be? Can you guess? Yeah. And uh, spa is what you see on the picture. So bow kicking, uh, football. Bow yajing. Yajing is a typical suffix that is used uh, for uh, describing a person that is performing an action. Go back to this picture, so a person that is taking a picture of a photographer. And the last one is what is wokta. Uh, wokta is also a typical suffix that describes uh, feeling or um, uh, State of mind, so Rakhis Wokta, love, Vailosh uh, Wokta, possibility, Vakis Wokta, problem. Um, here you can see 
Dalai Lama, with the Norwegian Sami president, he's a bit surprised because he has just found out that he is half Sami. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> uh, that's not true. <laughs> so I don't know if he had the possibility to, he had an opportunity to learn some Northern Sami from the Norwegian uh, Sami president, but uh, lucky you, <laughs> you have the chat right now. So let's start. Um, Bures uh, means hello, and it's also uh, usual to shake hands when you say it. The answer is Bures Bures, or just Bures. Mito Nammale, what's your name? Mun Nammale, and your name? Boston Let Ere, where are you from? Munlen, the same from Germany. Munlen, Luskasere. Momanna, how are you? Bures Tachmanna, Gito, I'm fine, thanks. Mun Halda Nokta Samgeva. I want to learn Sami. Uh, Samus Muna, speak Sami to me, which is also the name of a uh, uh, language campaign launched by the Norwegian uh, Sami Parliament. And the last one is goodbye, but it's also a bit tricky because there are about five or six way, different ways of saying goodbye, and it depends on how many people you're telling to. You're telling it to uh, but to make it simple, Batsederavan, which means um, literally translated, uh, stay healthy, uh, is said by a person that is leaving, and Mahaderavan, a person that is staying, go healthy, or being healthy. Uh, your name, so the interesting part. So uh, <laughs> I think it's the, the proper season, moment for it, because it's you know, spring, summer is coming, it might be a beautiful <laughs> sunny girl, sunny guy, and um, so you can use those phrases. The last three ones are very unusual, and uh, they are uh, they have been published in a brochure made by the Norwegian Islamic Parliament. So <laughs> they're not really, people don't really talk like that, but it's definitely grammatically correct. And you know, if you can use it in your own language, look at it, it's very, very uh, creative. Um, so, uh, um, uh, you are so beautiful. I love you. I miss you. Pretty uh, as a fresh blossoming strawberry for those who don't know the strawberry. That one, and it's very important, very Nordic culture in general. So, Chappat de Go, Lata Cactus Gorm. And the next one is The side of you warms me as the side of the first rain year of and I will be spring more. Yeah, you can say it even in English, right? You can see the mother of the baby in here. Tu oi ne glikim v begovosti šnjese za oi ne glikim za vita. Last one. There is orange strong from its beauty. It's as beautiful as the northern lights that flow over the sky on an ice cold frost in Africa. The čapa čugi svog da gled nju čapa begovosti as mi liba da alnis povržija. Where to learn Sami? Uh, one of the places that I would personally recommend is Sami Alaskuma in Bovigen, Kirtkina. It's located in the north of uh, Norway. It's in North Province. And uh, they run three month uh, intensive language courses. You don't need to speak any of the Nordic languages in order to participate because it's in Sami only. So everything is in Sami, everything is in Sami. And I took that course, but in Oslo, and it was very. Uh, yeah, I can say I learned a lot. I mean, I'm standing here telling about Northern Sami right now, so it worked for me. Uh, and another option, uh, which might be easier, for those who don't want to travel all the way up north, is Ushlo Dabdi Pusa, the course run by Sami community in Oslo, which is once per week. And um, it's probably more on grammar, but it's also definitely an alternative. And I've tried to gather some links online. Um, most of them uh, you can see on Omniglot, uh, so do visit that page. When it comes to um, materials in English, unfortunately there are not that many, almost none. And so I saw it for to memorize, and it's okay, uh, pretty good, so without any mistakes. So you can, you can check it out, or uh, just look at the link that I posted on Omniglot. Alright, uh, so there's a, this video, I hope it's going to work. Um, it's a very popular song, but song in Sami, with a different meaning. And all of you know this song, you might have just been sick and tired of it.
but I hope you will come <laughs> again. Uh, it's the most popular song on YouTube, so now you all know what it is. <laughs>
Okay. Yeah. My question is, how do you use Tally in your everyday life? Um, well, I have a, I also have a native summer speaker with me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, he, um, yeah, also if you have any questions about Tally, you can just ask me directly. Uh, but uh, I think I know Graham a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know more than <laughs> what I knew back then. And I just signed up for the course and I met some friends, uh, all Sami, uh, some people with ethnic Sami backgrounds, but that unfortunately have uh, had their language taken away from them. We wanted to uh, revitalize it. And we learned together. And uh, now, yeah, I have, uh, and I've never went to the north of Norway when I was born. And I've been to the north of Norway twice now, only for three more days. So uh, I learned in the capital of Norway also without full immersion and hearing it around me. Uh, but, yeah. Could you show us that slide with uh, the sentence with the reindeer and, and something like that? Because I, I need to write that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the site if you want me to... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Go for it, she's going to like it. <laughs> Uh, so was there any reason to learn Sami? Just, uh, I don't know, when I came to Norway four years ago, I thought that like, I want to learn Sami, I had this burning wish, but I didn't really know why, but I thought, okay, I've got to learn Norwegian first. <laughs> so I learned Norwegian, and then I signed up for this course, no, no particular reason, I just always found it really fascinating. So yeah, and I'm not, it's so funny, I'm often mistaken for an English speaker, because they seem to can't imagine that a foreigner, not just Norwegian, but a foreigner from the outside, learn Sami and also my advantage is that I hear it only from native speakers. There are basically no other people that speak it. So like uh, my accent is really good. I remember I went to practice it. Uh, they had a Sami market uh, in Oslo and I was like, it's so cool that you came. I'm like, you know, it's always nice to practice Sami. They were like, yeah, it's important to practice your native language so that you don't forget. Yeah. They, they call me, uh, I'm from Ukraine, Russian from Ukraine, they call me Ukraine or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. no, really Do you have um, community resource centers where the community can like, write about the history and events? Sorry? Oh, sorry. Do you have like a community resource centers at all? Ah, yeah, where? yeah, definitely. In, uh -huh. in big cities. Mm -hmm. In big cities, also Berlin and uh, Trondheim. And so, Berlin, for example, has never been placed uh, where there were a lot of Sami cities in the west of Norway, uh, but there are a lot of Sami that moved there. So, I, I, I live in Berlin for one year, I moved just yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, back to Oslo. And in Oslo, by the way, Oslo is um, the biggest, uh, it also has the biggest Sami community in Norway. So, the Sami people are originally from the north of Norway but there are more of them in Oslo than in the north. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's definitely easy to find native speakers. There is a uh, Ushlu Sami Sami, uh, also Sami Sami um, Society group. And uh, there is this a place called Sami Vyasu, yes, Sami House. And so we meet there and we, there is a party on the, I think, 9th of May or something. In Oslo, you're welcome to come. <laughs> <laughs> if you're able in Oslo, I invite you all for a uh, traditional Sami uh, dinner with reindeer meat. So oh, just give me a call. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, and you're all. Uh, do we have, I want to show you one more minute. Do we have? We have three minutes. Yeah, perfect. Uh, I have the next talk, so. Some of that even I have to tell 
you, uh, I have a little bit of free story uh, of, of this guy. This guy is not um, originally from Sweden. This is um, uh, Sweden without telling me something. Uh, show in Sweden. And um, he's um, adopted, he was adopted by some family uh, from Colombia. Uh, he, has grown with, uh, he has grown up with um, uh, reindeer herders, so he's a reindeer herder himself. And um, he um, makes yoiks, traditional sound music. By the way, uh, during the cultural evening, we decided to teach you how to yoik. So you're all welcome to join us and have some fun with yoik. As I said, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have that much time to tell you about this beautiful. Um, uh, tradition is, by the way, one of the oldest singing traditions in in Europe. But we're gonna. Uh, he won the show. He won Sweet Got Talent, and um, he became famous all over Scandinavia. He's South Sami, not North Sami. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's him. Ha, ha, ha. 